Hey guys, hope you are well. Wanted to go over a quick news story that I just saw. I don't know when it hit the CNBC homepage. I'm assuming it did so very recently. And I wanted to go over it right away because I think it's really, really important. Let me go ahead and do a screen share and pull this up. So I've been talking about universal basic income since I started the George Gammon channel in the middle of 2019. And I I've, was saying that, and you guys know, I always say there are no certainties, there are only probabilities, but I think the probabilities are high that once we start doing these stimulus checks, and this is what I was saying back in 2020. And uh, I'm sure you guys heard me say this a million times on my videos. But I said, once we start these stimulus checks, it's going to be like QE. <laughs> like, like, we're not going back. Who, who, who are the people? You get the people acclimated to getting all of these additional benefits, all this additional money, all of this free money, quote unquote, and you think when the politicians want to turn off the spigot, the people are just going to say, oh, OK, yeah, no problem. You're right. We need to be we need to be fiscally responsible here. <laughs> of course not. The people are going to hit the streets with the, the pitchforks. So and the more stimulus checks you give them, the more dependent people come become on those stimulus checks and the more they will demand them in the future. I want to be clear. I'm not saying that permanent UBI is guaranteed. It's a 100% probability. Therefore, a certain, I'm not saying that. I, I'm saying that I think the probabilities are a lot higher than most people in financial media are willing to admit or are recognizing. And it's it's just like one of those things where you start to hear the drum beat, like marijuana being legalized a decade ago. Everyone thought that was just crazy talk. But you hear you hear about it more and more and more and more until boom, now all of a sudden, in your state, it's it's most likely a reality. I think it's the exact same thing with UBI. Do we get it this year permanently? Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? But I think you're going to hear the drop because of what we're doing now and because of people becoming, I don't want to use the word addicted, but let, let's say because of people starting to build their spending habits around the stimulus or additional unemployment, once people start to build their work decisions around getting unemployment and stimulus, it, it, it makes it much harder to retract. And then therefore, you hear that drum beat more and more and more. It gets louder and louder and louder until the politicians, even on the right, have to submit even if they want to be elected. And I, I want to, before we hit the article here, I, I want to give an anecdotal story that I think really hits the nail on the head. And I, I've, as most of you know, I've been in Tucson for the last week or so just trying to get my trucks ready to sell because I'm, I don't want to deal with the whole facial recognition BS. And so I've, I've been down here. And when I was in Tucson helping out my younger brother, this would have been like 2017, 2018, something like that. And this is when I was dealing with the trucks in the first place, flipping a lot of them. 
it was, I mean, I'd have to get Ubers everywhere. I'd have to get Ubers to the mechanic. Then you got to get Ubers out to the storage lot. Then you got to get Ubers out to, to the auction. And then you got to Uber, 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 Uber. You're Ubering, like, I was Ubering like three or four times a day. And in doing so, it, I can't even remember a time that it took longer than five minutes to get an Uber. Maximum five minutes. So over the last week or week and a half that I've been in Tucson, <laughs> it's almost impossible to get an Uber. Now, it's possible. Don't get me wrong. But you, you got to wait like half hour, 45 minutes. Most of the times you'll click the Uber thing and it'll just say no cars available, no cars available, no cars available. Last night I was trying to use Uber Eats to get food delivered because I just detest going to restaurants right now because I just, I'm not a big fan of people yelling at me for not wearing my mask all the way up the nose. I mean, you know what they're doing. I, I'm preaching to the choir here. You guys get it. So I just get the Uber Eats and it took me like 45 minutes last night just to order because there, every single time you go to a restaurant, the, not available, driver's not available, driver's not available, driver's not available. And you're just like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> what? 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 How? I, I thought... Half of the United States was unemployed. Or I thought half the United States is either unemployed or underemployed. I thought that we've got sky high unemployment, which we do. I thought that the, that the uh, not the unemployment rate itself, but the initial claims, the jobless claims are higher than they were at, it, at the very worst point in the GFC. All of this is true. So you would think that with the employment picture being so bad in the United States, you'd have an abundance of Uber drivers because they were doing whatever they needed to do just to make ends meet. Oh, no, 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 no. It's impossible to get one. And every single time I ask the Uber driver, I say, what's going on? Like, like they're like, there's just no drivers. No one wants to drive. No one wants to. Why? They give me three reasons every single time. Number one, the drivers don't want to wear masks. They don't want to deal with that. Number two, I guess Uber makes it mandatory that you give out hand sanitizer. And the drivers are just sick and tired of people stealing all their hand sanitizer. And it like crushes their profit margins. <laughs> I can't blame them. And that, or number three, which is the main thing that I hear all the time, is stimulus checks. Well, why Uber drivers don't want to work? Because they're making more money just sitting home. They're getting all the money they need with stimulus. So why go work for Uber when you could just sit home, get your stimulus check, hang out with your friends, go down to the local dispensary, smoke some weed, get high, get drunk, go out and party, do this, do that. And the government's paying you. Why go work Uber? And obviously my point is, I know there's a lot of people that advocate for UBI because of automation and self-driving trucks and all. I, I don't think they understand the, the slippery slope that they're on. I don't think they understand the unintended consequences. I don't think they understand human nature. And it is very true that for some people, they'll take the UBI or they've taken the stimulus checks and they've used it to pay down their debt. They've used it for productive means. They've used it to start a, a business maybe. Maybe they've used it to start an online blog. Maybe they used it to start a YouTube channel. Who, who knows? But they've used it for productive purposes. But if we look at the aggregate total as to whether or not the stimulus checks and the constant stimulus checks, it's just, it's, listen, incomes are up significantly since 2019. How, how many more stimulus checks do we need for heaven's sakes? Incomes are higher than they were in 2019. We, we've got 
the CNBC telling us that the economy is booming, it's on fire. So why why do we need these these stimulus bills? I, I don't get it. And not only that, if you look at the percentage of the stimulus bills that actually go into stimulus checks, it's a very small percentage. As an example, with this last 1.9 trillion stimulus package, it's not like 1.9 trillion went to the American public. It's like maybe 300 billion. And everything else just goes into putting, you know, going into the politician's back pocket. Everything else basically goes to the Cantillon effect. I'm, I'm not saying literally it's going into the politician, but they're getting kickbacks. They're, it's going to the insiders. It's going to the, the, you know, they say, oh, it's to spend on this infrastructure. Okay, you're right. It's going to all of the companies that are owned by people who are buddy-buddy with the politicians that are telling them, hey, if you give me this government contract, I'll give you 250 grand or I'll, you know, donate this much to your next campaign or something. It, it's, it's, it's all the the these insiders greasing the political wheel. And so what, I mean, how does this, how has these stimulus checks affected productivity? And I don't think anyone in their right mind could argue that this has increased productivity. <laughs> I mean, we're paying people to stay home and not work. How could this be creating more productivity? And if it's creating less productivity, then I don't care how much money we're sending out, how many currency units, we're, we're, at, at, over the long run, we're becoming poorer, not richer. So let's go through this article, which I think is a perfect illustration of this drumbeat for UBI just getting louder and louder and louder. 29 Senate Democrats urge Biden to put recurring stimulus checks, unemployment aid extension in recovery plan. Recurring means it's not a one-off. You get it every single month. So what is the difference between permanent UBI and recurring stimulus checks. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> They're the exact same. Key points, 21 Senate Democrats led by Ron Wyden are push. Okay, we talked about that. They want to aid, they want the aid tied to economic conditions so it does not lapse too early. So, okay, such as, we'll get into this hopefully in the article. Okay, let's talk about Biden's plan for the next stimulus package. I mean, if the if the economy is on fire, wh why do we need these stimulus packages? I, I mean, I don't get it. If, if incomes are up massively since 2019, wh what are we doing here? And by the way, another anecdotal story that I think is important there's this this park in Tucson that's kind of in the, near the downtown area. And I used to go jogging by it all the time, almost every single night. It's where a lot of the homeless people hang out. And obviously, a lot of these people are homeless because they're addicted to drugs and they have mental illnesses. It's not to imply that everyone is homeless falls into that category, but it's, it's, it's the, the large majority fall into that category. And I remember vividly how many homeless people were that would hang out at that park. Recently, I've, I've, I've done the same jog when I was staying downtown at that other hotel. And the, the amount of homeless people and, and drug addicts at this park has increased tenfold. There's ten, at least 10 times more. I mean, it's packed with like tent cities and so, I mean, what are we doing here? What, what, I, I mean, the first question that comes to mind is how are these homeless people not getting, are, should they be getting stimulus checks? And how are they still homeless? 
as you guys know that those are rhetorical questions I, i'm so but the main takeaway here is anecdotally i can tell you that at least in this section of tucson people aren't getting people aren't the the amount of poverty is not being reduced the amount of poverty has increased dramatically take that for what it's worth oh ron of oregon go figure <laughs> jeez holy cow oregon is just i can't believe i was born there isn't that incredible wow it was so much different back then boy So here's their quote unquote rationale, I guess. The crisis is far from over. The families deserve certainty that they can put food on the table and keep roofs over their head. Okay, I, I, the crisis isn't over, then how is the economy booming and on fire? How, how do we square that circle? Families should not be at the mercy of constantly shifting legislative timelines and ad hoc solutions. See, see what this is implying here, guys? As though the solution is government. They are our saviors. They're the only ones that can get us out of this bind. I think someone needs to call up Ron and say, Ron, who are the producers? How does an economy grow? Does an economy grow, or let me put it a different way, does a healthy economy grow from government just sending people checks, or does it grow from entrepreneurs creating jobs, creating businesses, producing goods and services that create a sustainable cash flow for the employees. You see, Ron thinks that government is our savior and all we need to do is just rely more on government and central planning and then all of our economic problems would be solved. What he is ignoring is that the central planners can't solve anything. The only thing they do is make the problem worse over the long run. Why? Because it's distorting the economy. It's creating malinvestment and a misallocation of resources. And what we've been seeing in 2020 and 21 is a perfect example of that. The story I just told you about Uber, perfect example. And it's unbelievable that Ron doesn't realize that the economy isn't politicians. The economy is businesses, small and mid-sized businesses run by entrepreneurs who are willing to go out there and take risk. It's, it's, it's about those entities producing stuff. That's our economy. Wyden wants to avoid repeating what took place last summer when the jobless benefits boost expired and contributed to millions of Americans falling into poverty. <laughs> no, what contributed to millions of Americans falling into poverty is Wyden locked everyone in a cage and forced businesses to shut down. That's what contributed to millions of Americans falling into poverty. So it's that classic scenario where the arsonist is also the firefighter 
or at least claims to be the firefighter. While the job market continues to climb back toward pre-pandemic levels, many lawmakers worry the existing aid measures will not go far enough. And, and again, it's this total ignorance to unintended consequences. Well, there you go. You guys get it. So we're not too permanent UBI yet, but boy, oh boy, we're on the path. I hate to say it, it's not an if question, it's a when question, because that would imply certainties and not probabilities. But uh, I mean, from what I'm reading, from what I'm hearing it, in, in media, social media, it seems like this is uh, as close to a foregone conclusion as as there can be. So, and you know, I say that with a sense of frustration, obviously, because that's people might say, "Well, George, why are you against people getting free money?" Well, it's not that I'm against the, the, the people getting the free money in and of itself. It's it's I'm against what this does to society and our economy long term. And what this does to promote people's sense of reliance on the government. And it 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 brainwashes people to believe that the power, they have no power to achieve their objectives. The free market has, the free market isn't enough. The free market doesn't have the power to produce the jobs. The entrepreneurs don't have the skill set to produce the jobs to pull us out of this economic malaise. The only solution is government. Therefore, let's just give more and more and more power to the central planners because it's only through their genius and pure generosity that we can survive. That's the message that this is sending, and that's why I get so frustrated with it, among many other things. All right, guys. I'll wrap this one up. Let's do some shout-outs here. We've got Quantitative Disease, Jeff McCarthy, Levon1, Peter Frauen, Phil H., Lloyd Braun, Charles Robb, Phil Souden, Matt Mc. Matt McD. Hopefully I'm getting that. <laughs> Just McD. We've got Dominic Stappe, Sebastian Gerzek, Sue Davidson, Gers Gersick, maybe Gersick. Polo One, Scotts M. Sewell, Sustainable Lumber Company, Texas Patriot. CA Liberty, ICU2 Major Hater, MM Capitalist, Mateo Ballinger Camden, Magda W. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you on the next video.